Uh, we'll talk about uh, using organic elemental analysis uh, for the identification of uh, cellulose nitrate, and I will focus on the X-ray films. Um, so I will start with a bit of uh, history about the development of the X-ray film, and then I will um, uh, try to explain how we got to the organic elemental analysis. So as we know, the X-rays were discovered by Redgen in 1895, and by then there were uh, plenty of uh, materials available to be used as supports for the development of the radiographic uh, image. Um, and um, so we know that uh, in 1878 uh, we have the first production of celluloid, and in 18 1878, sorry, in 1888 we I have the use of cellulose uh, nitrate uh, as a substrate media for the um, uh, negatives, for photographic negatives. However, uh, for the development for the, of the radiographic uh, image, uh, the preferred uh, medium was uh, glass plates. And uh, they were used, uh, I think, in, from 1896, there was a successful uh, design uh, which um, prevailed, and uh, they were using glass plates for the radiographic purposes. And uh, it carried on until there was a World War I. And uh, what happened then were there were two uh, main reasons why there was a need for an alternative support. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a need of a portable X-ray apparatus for the field hospitals. So glass plates were not the ideal um, uh, support. Um, and, uh, and the second one was that the main source of the glass was uh, from Belgium, and Belgium obviously wasn't accessible because of the war. Um, uh, therefore, uh, in 1914, we have the introduction of the single-coated cellulose nitrate X-ray film, um, but that was a bit problematic because it curled extensively. So the development of the radiographic image and the, um, in the trace uh, was um, a problem. So that led to the double screen uh, technique by 1916 and uh, the addition of the non curling uh, film base, which eventually, finally, uh, it uh, brought uh, the dub dupletized, double sided uh, uh, film on cellulose nitrate uh, base uh, in the, uh, by 1918. And uh, eventually, uh, oh yes. Uh, just a picture there of uh, how the double coating uh, um, uh, works on the radiographic uh, uh, film. And of course, um, there wasn't just a single one fire. There were many fires that uh, occurred because of the flammable uh, nature of the uh, cellulose nitrate. Uh, and uh, by 1924, we have the introduction of cellulose acetate in for the X-ray film. And, but in 1929, there was a massive fire at the Cleveland Hospital, uh, which was uh, triggered by the X-ray film uh, collection. Um, and I think that prompted the discontinuation of the cellulose nitrate uh, for radiographic purposes in the United States uh, by the year 1933. Uh, I stress that in the United States, because in the UK, carried on, uh, the Ilford Limited uh, produced both uh, uh, X-ray films on uh, cellulose acetate and cellulose uh, nitrate from 1932 to four and for many years. So eventually, we reached the 1950s when we have, we can say that we have the discontinuation of cellulose nitrate uh, worldwide. Um, so now in the Natural History Museum, uh, we have a small collection of uh, film and, uh, and uh, negatives of uh, photographs and photographs. Uh, but we have a much uh, a larger collection of uh, X-ray uh, films. And um, the uh, X-ray uh, film uh, collection exists because uh, actually we also have an X-ray lab uh, which was uh, set up in the mid-1930s. Uh, and uh, it has been in use ever since uh, by the uh, curators and researchers which would like to uh, study the skeletons of specimens uh, by developing uh, X-ray films, by studying them uh, through the X-ray film. Um, so uh, that means that uh, it was expected that in our collection we will have uh, cellulose uh, nitrate uh, uh, X-ray uh, films. Uh, so the identification, uh, though, was proved uh, a bit tricky. 
uh, because uh, what happened was uh, when it came to the photographic film and uh, the roll film, it's very straightforward. You have the edge printing, you have notches, so you can identify um, the film based uh, on that. Uh, however, with the X-ray films, uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't find any uh, edge printing um, classifying it as um, nitrate or any notches, um, at least in the collections that I surveyed. Uh, the only thing I found was the only edge, edge printing that I did find was uh, that of uh, safety. And uh, that wasn't very helpful, obviously, when you want to try to identify cell as nitrate instead. Uh, so, well, I had to think of the uh, alternative ways of uh, the identification, and uh, one is the degradation, to check the degradation pattern, which can be very helpful when you do have degradation, but uh, as it happens with the uh, X-ray film uh, on cellulose nitrate, I couldn't find a single one that it was uh, degraded, so that was a bit of a problem. Um, so then I had to um, go for a uh, destructive uh, 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 test. Um, I have highlighted here just the flow test um, because that was the one that I used. Uh, I didn't go for the diphenylamine spot test because, um, well, the um, solution is uh, corrosive, uh, quite corrosive, but um, that doesn't mean that the flow test is better because you use trichloroethylene, which is uh, carcinogenic. But um, uh, at least it was a bit more straightforward uh, with the flow test because you just need a test tube and uh, the um, trichloroethylene, and then you just check whether it floats or it uh, sinks. So if the sample floats, it's uh, cellulose uh, acetate. If it sinks, then it's cellulose nitrate. Um, however, the flow test and the literature does say that it's not 100% uh, reliable. And uh, if you remember, because of the structure of the X-ray uh, film, uh, it proved that it is even more so unreliable when you try to identify cellulose nitrate. So I had to continue with a, a different way of identification. And I uh, took six samples um, to be analyzed under FTIR. Uh, and we used the attenuated total reflectance FTIR of the of VNA, which is next door to Natural History Museum. It's very useful to have such neighbors. So. Uh, we had uh, six samples, we analyzed uh, two sides, so we ended up with flux spectra, but only one result, and that was of the coating, which was, uh, we found the closest um, 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 spectra was out of uh, cow gelatin. And that was very not very helpful. Obviously, there's a very interesting article by Barbara Walsh on the use of uh, FTIR analysis for the identification of uh, cellulose uh, nitrate. Um, which uh, pro it works for the photographic film, but with the X-ray film being coated on both sides is tricky. Obviously, you could remove the coat, uh, the coating, and then reanalyze. Uh, but uh, doing that on a sample that is no bigger than a five square millimeter is a bit uh, laborious and uh, tricky. So um, at that point, we were thinking of. Uh, I was thinking of the burn test, but uh, my colleague uh, Stanislav Strokopitov thought that, okay, if we are going to burn it, maybe we should burn it in a more um, analytical way. So we use the organic element analysis. Now, what's that? It's uh, equipment that uh, is uh, the one that, the analyzer that we have in Natural History Museum is called uh, Vario L cube. And uh, what it does basically is you introduce your sample into an auto sampler roll and then uh, you, it, that is dropped into a furnace of 1,150 degrees of Celsius. And then uh, what you see here on your uh, left is um, uh, the filter, uh, where basically it absorbs uh, the different elements, organic elements, that will come out of the fumes of the sample. So it can uh, measure the concentration of uh, carbon, of uh, hydrogen, of um, uh, nitrogen and even sulfur, I think. Uh, but it takes some preparation before that. So the sample uh, goes into a tin boat and then you fold it uh, very tightly. So you try to uh, extract any um, air. You don't want any trapped air. And then, um, and, and I have to add here that the sample that you use is uh, minimal compared to the sample that you have to use to do the flow test. 
Um, you can uh, have it as uh, little as uh, 0.2 milligrams. Uh, and then uh, once it's wrapped uh, as tightly in that tin boat, uh, it's dropping to, uh, you place it into the auto assembler roll and it's purged with helium because you, of course uh, we are surrounded by air and you want to exclude any atmospheric gas to interrupt with your uh, uh, readings. Uh, and then, then uh, it's been uh, burned, uh, it's bu it burns into this uh, furnace and uh, the filters analyze the, um, uh, the concentration of uh, the elements. And uh, for the, uh, the ones that we analyzed, I'm just uh, showing you here the um, average nitrogen concentration uh, for the cellulose nitrogen film uh, as opposed to the uh, cellulose acetate film. And uh, we were expecting to find some nitrogen in cellulose acetate film because of the coating. Uh, but as you can see, the percentages are, the concentrations are much, uh, th are quite different. And um, it actually, uh, the percentage, uh, the concentration of uh, nitrogen content that we uh, found in our cellulose nitrate uh, uh, films, they were compatible with what is suggested in the literature, something between 10.7 to 10, 11.8%. Uh, um, then what w uh, we did was uh, we want to estimate the reproducibility of, um, our, uh, of the nitrogen content. So what we did, we selected uh, three films that we knew that they were cellulose nitrate. And then with a Japani Japanese screw punch, we selected uh, five um, samples from, those, uh, from each of those uh, films um, from five different points. And then we analyzed again. Uh, and uh, then you will see that the relative standard deviation uh, is between 0.4 to 1%. Uh, 1%. So we were quite happy with that uh, uh, result. And, uh, and it was just that we want to check that the readings that we got were um, uh, accurate. So in conclusion, I would say that um, the organic elemental analysis, it's, uh, it, it gives you accurate and, um, and quick uh, results uh, when you want to identify uh, cellulose nitrate. But I would go even further. It's, um, it's an analysis that is usually it's overlooked. And uh, I think uh, since you can get uh, the um, actual concentration of the uh, nitrogen or the uh, um, carbon or even the sulfur, um, it could be, it, it has a potential that could be used in conjunction with other analysis uh, to study perhaps the degradation of the uh, film. And with that, um, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>